Grab your snorkels and your flippers because we are diving under the sea. Liani meets the colourful characters from Ocean Life. Abby is on a mission to protect the turtles. And leading you through this underwater adventure is dive master Adeline. This episode of Juice TV is proudly supported by founding partner, the Children's Hospital Foundation. Hi guys, I'm Adeline and these are all my friends. Hello. Hi. 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 I'm a unicorn. Why, hello there. We are going on an underwater adventure. I just got back from my own underwater adventure with my family. I went to Fiji and I did a lot of swimming. I went snorkeling and saw a blue starfish and blue fish and really cool coral. You don't have to go to Fiji to check out all these sea creatures. We have it right here. Let's dive into our first story right now. Hey guys, I'm Liani. I'm so excited because I'm going fishing. I didn't know you could go fishing in the hospital. This is going to be so much fun. Oh, hi, you must be Liani. I'm Richard. Yeah, we're going fishing, right? Uh, not quite. No, but I've got to tell you, Liani, without all these animals that we're going to be finding out about today, there wouldn't be any fish to go fishing for. So we're going to look after these animals and find out about them. Then later on, you'll be able to go fishing. All right. All right. Hey, guys. What's this big thing looking at me over here? Hey, calm down. It's a camera, Bob. We're going to be on Juice TV, remember? Ah, ah, a camera! I'll just go play over here then. Jeez, talk about the scaredy cat. I can't wait to meet all of these kids. It is going to be so much fun. Hey, dude, I'm cool as a cucumber. Just maxing, relaxing. It ain't too taxing. <laughs> you know how it is. This hospital is gnarly, dude. Hey, what's all the parking for, man? Actually, that feels kind of nice. Oh my gosh, I've been waiting my whole life to be on Juice TV. The host is coming, it's finally happening. I can't wait, I can't wait either, I can't wait either. What are these spiky looking pom-pom things? Well, they are spiky and they're called short spine sea urchins. And their spines are used to protect themselves from being preyed upon by predators, fish and sharks. They also use their spines for walking along the bottom of the ocean looking for food. Yep. So they're a pretty cool animal. They also have their mouth underneath their body, just like the sea stars and, and animals like that that are on the bottom of the ocean. But they have five teeth and each tooth is one and a half centimetres long and then when they want to eat, they come out and they spread out and they stab and scrape and they make a pulpy soup out of the algae or the dead animal on the ocean floor and then they suck that pulpy soup up into a groove and each tooth into their tummy. That's pretty weird, isn't it? Yep. yep. I did a little fun fact fishing and it turns out their five teeth can sharpen themselves and be replaced every few months. And you know what? In some places like New Zealand, they eat them. They call it kinna, bro. That's cool, bro. So what's another fun sea urchin fact? All right, well, believe it or not, amongst all those spines, these little guys have lots of little tube feet as well. And they actually use them for holding onto the rocks and, and sticking onto the bottom so that animals can't flick them upside down to eat them. Because underneath where their mouth is, there aren't very many spines or they're short, so they're vulnerable to being eaten or smashed apart by fish. Yep. So they don't want that to happen, so they use their little tube feet and their spines to wedge into the rocks. Pretty cool. She's coming this way. Pick up next. Pick up next. Pick up next. Pick up next. Wait, wait, where are you going? What? You going to the cucumbers? Oh, come on, we're the stars of the show. We're cool as cu cucumbers. No. Oh. Oh. Okay, bring that camera nice and close. All right, these ones are our tropical sea cucumbers. 
Now, they're related to the common sea cucumber, but these ones are found a little bit further north in Queensland. And can you see that bright orange colour? Yeah. What do you reckon that means? Poisonous? Absolutely, they are poisonous, but they're okay to touch. But they're using that orange colour to say, danger, don't eat me, I'm poisonous. If you put me in your mouth, I might make you sick or kill you. And there's a reason that they've got that is because we're gonna get to touch it and find out how it feels. Are you ready? Okay. Got your pointer finger? All right, let's reach in and have a little touch. How do they feel? Are they hard or soft? They're super soft. Now, do you know why they're so soft? No. It was because they barrack for New South Wales. <laughs> no, it's because they're actually made full of water and they have no bones. They've got very delicate skin and they're easily eaten. So the only way they can protect themselves is to have that bright orange colour. Don't eat me. Don't put me in your mouth or I'll make you sick or kill you. So that's how they, they roll. Do you see those beautiful branches coming out the top ends there? Yeah. That's how they feed themselves. They use those branches for holding out in the water and they collect plankton. As the water rushes past, they trap the plankton in them. They drag one branch at a time into their mouth, scrape that food off. If there's no food around or they're not eating and they're not hungry anymore, they drag those branches inside their body and you don't even get to see them. These cool cucumbers can be found sucking up the ocean's floor like a vacuum cleaner. All right, now these ones are our common black sea cucumbers. Let's have a little touch, see how they feel. It's like soft. It is super soft as well. If it's soft and it doesn't have bright colours, how does it protect itself? That's a good question. As we know, the tropical cucumbers, bright red, don't eat me. These ones, they use their black colour, so it's colour again, but they're using their colour to hide amongst the rocks, their habitat, and they're hidden, so they're camouflaged. Oh, OK. Do you know what they eat? No, what do they eat? They eat the sand off the bottom of the ocean. They eat up the sand because in the sand there's tiny little bits of food, there's plankton and there's bits of algae. So they eat up the sand, they absorb whatever food's out of the sand and whatever's not food, out the back door. They poo out clean sand. So the next time you go to the beach, the only lying on the sand, just remember where that came from. Ew. All right, so they eat the sand, but their mouth end is only for eating food. What does that mean? It means they breathe through their bottom. So cucumbers, they're vegetables, so can we eat these? Uh, well, actually these ones some people do. Yes, they do. In, uh, in France, they call it beche de mer, and in Indonesia, they call it trepang. So they strip the skin off them and take the guts out. Basically, they're like a salty tofu, but they absorb the flavours of whatever sauces you put with them. Yeah. High in protein. Don't think I'd like to eat one. No. <laughs> Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with some more marine life. Those ocean life creatures were pretty cool, but my favourite underwater character is Aquaman. He's my favourite because he's a superhero. Let's go fishing to learn more about me. Making a splash in this underwater episode is seven-year-old Adeline. Her bed is always full of adorable cuddly pets. And if she could be any hero, it would be Supergirl. My favourite hobby is arts and crafts because I love being creative. My favourite TV show is Girl Meets the World. My biggest achievement was winning three trophies for, from netball. If I could have anyone come to my birthday party, it would be all my friends. This is my best impression. I don't like Joel Joel. That was me doing Miranda Sings. My favourite songs are Girls Like You, Maroon 5, and Honey, Fish and Lemon Every Day by Lake Brian. In Fiji, I get this turtle necklace from a nice lady who sells jewellery. And she tells me it means good luck. And since there's two turtles on it, it means extra good luck. Now it's time to check out some more tiny turtles with Abby. Hello, my name is Abby and I'm at the Queensland Museum. I'm on the port of the mission to save the turtles. I'm here to discover what we can do to help save our marine mates. In 
Now this is a big vision, so we've called in a big name in the biz. Meet Patrick Cooper, aka the Turtle Expert. He has an amazing display here for the World Science Festival, which will help us and our mission. Patrick, where do turtles come from? Well, these turtles come from Monrepo. Have you heard of Monrepo? It's a beach up near Bundaberg. Ooh! And Monrepo is uh, where scientists have been monitoring turtles for 50 years. Wow! In Finding Nemo, there are two turtles called Crush and Squirt. Do the turtles really ride the EAC? Is it really true they do? Yep. Do you know what the EAC stands for? East Australian Current! That's right, and they do do it. So these little loggerheads, when they hatch at Mon Repo, they run down the beach, they swim about 80 kilometres offshore, and they get picked up by the Eastern Australian Current. Wow! And that takes them down the Eastern Australian coast, past the tip of New Zealand, and over to the coast of South America. Oh my goodness! Do they go to California? No, they don't go to California. But once they're over in the coast of South America, off Chile and Peru, they stay there before they get back to Australia. It's about 16 years. And when 16 yeah, years? Yeah. That's two years of my age. <laughs> and and, and when, when they get back here, it's another 14 years before they're big enough to start going and breeding at the nesting beaches. Oh, my goodness. That is amazing. What did the turtles eat? Well, when they're little like this, they ride on the surface of the ocean currents and they're eating anything they encounter. So they're eating little invertebrates, little things like uh, larval fish, um, small squid, any insects that fall out of the atmosphere. Yeah. But, but while they're doing that, and that makes them very vulnerable to eating plastics in the ocean too because they yeah. pick up little floating objects. Yes. And when they grow to adults, they're eating things like big crustaceans, so crayfish, crabs, and they eat mollusks, so shellfish. Do you become a turtle expert? Well, I'm not really a turtle expert. I, I sort of am. I, I work here as senior curator of reptiles at the museum, and uh, my knowledge of turtles comes from working closely with Colin Olympus, who runs the turtle project within the Department of Environment and Science. So I've done studies on nesting beaches. I've helped him catch turtles in Moreton Bay. I spent three weeks up on Crab Island off Cape York with my wife at one stage. Where's Crab Island? Bay. Right up near the tip of Cape York, in far north Queensland. Boxes. Well, these are our transparent incubators, and we put the eggs in there so the public, when they come through, can see the turtles hatching. So normally this happens at the bottom of a nest chamber, 60 centimetres below the sand, and nobody can see what's going on. So we do this where people can actually watch the whole process. What is an incubator? An incubator is a container with a controlled temperature, so we try and keep these temperatures around 29 degrees because that's a suitable temperature to hatch the eggs out. How long does it take for them to hatch? It depends a bit on the temperature, so cooler temperatures take longer, but the first of these eggs started hatching after 50 days incubation. Oh, <laughs> I love it when I see baby animals like these. Yeah, well, little turtles are really cute. Everybody loves these little turtles. Yeah. Are any of these guys ready for a swim? They may be. Why, would you like to put a turtle in a tank for its first swim? I think that is, sounds wonderful. When you hold it, hold it like that and just put your finger gently on top. Can you do that? So hand out flat and just put your finger gently on top, not too hard, gently, and just bring it up. And if you just put it over there and drop it in. Yeah, there you go. Yes! How's that? that He's enjoying awesome. that, isn't he? Do turtles live for? Nobody really knows because uh, no single scientist has managed to follow a turtle right through its whole life. But we know the turtles that are nesting at the beaches up at Mon Repo start nesting when they're about 30 years old. And some of those turtles they've been following for 40 years. So we know that at 70 years of age, those turtles are still laying eggs, those eggs are still hatching. And the feeling is that turtles probably go to about 80 years of age. They probably don't make it to 100. Oh. Do 
do they grow? Well, in that 30 year period, they go from these tiny little hatchlings to adults that have a, a carapace, which is the shell length of about a metre long. Oh my goodness, that's as long as a turtle in a wildlife park. <laughs> and we can show you an adult turtle, so there's, there's one okay. out on display out there, so we can show you how big they grow. Okay. Seen. Well, that's a loggerhead turtle, Abby. That's um, the same sort as you're looking at with the little babies before. Oh, and, and that one would be about 30 years old, but they do yeah. get a bit bigger than that. And at that size, it's ready to start laying eggs. How many species of turtle are there? There are seven species of marine turtles in the world, and we have six of those here in Australia. I want to know what type of turtles are crush and squirt? Crush and squirt from Finding, Finding Nemo. Nemo. I, they were green turtles. Green turtles? Yes. Wow. Did you see what I did? You so totally rock, squirt! So give me some fin. Noggin. Dude. These turtles have a big journey out of us. What can we do to help them? Well, there's so many things we can do to help turtles, especially when they're little. You know, things like driving on nesting beaches with four-wheel drives isn't a good idea. Turtles get either run over or, or stuck in uh, wheel tracks. If you live near the beach, you can uh, be sensitive about the lighting. The little turtles find their way to the sea because the horizon over the sea is lighter than that on the land. So if we've got street lights and house lights in behind the dune, some of those turtles wander inland. But one of the major problems the turtles have now, particularly the little turtles, is with plastics in the ocean. Ocean. Plastics are really bad and plastics are everywhere. So to show this, I went out and started collecting plastics. So this case shows plastics that are washing up on beaches. Some of these are from Queensland, there's some from New South Wales. I've got samples from Florida. Um, that little piece there, somebody collected for me from South America and the plastic gets really bad when it starts to break down. So these hard plastics, when they break down in the sunlight and in the ocean, they're the sort of things those little turtles eat. And we're finding lots of little turtles have plastic in their guts now. Oh, that's sad. So what we've got here are samples of plastics that have actually been taken out of the guts of turtles and seabirds. These things are killing our little turtles out in the ocean. So this little bit of cable tie here was taken out of a small turtle and it blocked its gut and killed the turtle. Aww. And plastics like that are also really, really bad for seabirds. Oh no! So this bird here is called a flesh-footed shearwater and it comes from Lord Howe Island. And this plastic here was taken from the flesh-footed shearwater colony on Lord Howe Island. It's been all picked up at sea and brought back by the adult birds to feed to their chicks. Patrick, what do you have here? Well, these are the winners in an art competition we had. We had a competition called uh, Hatchery Crusaders, and kids at various schools made uh, turtle artworks. So that's something else you can do, Abby. You can reuse plastics and uh, be creative with them. So instead of throwing them out, you can make wonderful artworks like this. And you know, you, you might like to make one at home that your parents can hang on the wall and uh, decorate the house. What do you think? And it's good if you do it with plastics you pick up out of the environment. So if you go to a beach and get a hold of a litter of the beach and make some nice artwork out of it. So, so Abby, you can see why plastics are really bad. We've all got to change our, the way we use plastics. We've got to think about recycling. We've got to think about saying no to plastic if you don't need it. If you're buying things in shops and they've got heaps and heaps of wrapping, try and avoid it. Your plastic is really bad in the environment. We're talking now that there are 8 to 12 million tonnes of plastic <gasps> going into the ocean every year. Oh, no! There are over 100 million tonnes of plastic in the oceans now. We're making 300 million tonnes of plastic a year, and every 11 years that figure's doubling. So we've got to start saying no to plastics, 
have other things to use, and there are alternatives, and I'm going to give you an alternative. Have you, have you heard of a bamboo toothbrush? Have you got a bamboo toothbrush? No. No, well this is just like a normal toothbrush, but it's made out of bamboo, so you avoid having a plastic toothbrush, and I'm going to give that to you, and you can try using that. Now, it's a bit funny when you first use it, because it's sort of like putting a bit of wood in your mouth, but you get used to it very quickly, and it does a very good job of cleaning teeth. So you, could, so you can start buying things in the shops that aren't made of plastic but do the same job. Thank you so much, Patrick. It's all right. I've never used a bamboo toothbrush Well, before. I hope you enjoy it. So there you have it, everybody. This is how you save the turtles. Use plastic-free products. Always recycle. And if you see plastic on the beach, turn it into artwork. My name is Bobby. Thank you for helping me to save the turtle. We want you to be a part of Juice TV. We're always on the lookout for hosts, interviewers, behind the scenes helpers, and mini producers. You can be any age, you don't have to have any experience. How much easier could it be? To find out the next time we're filming at the hospital, just head to our website, juicedtv.com.au, or our Facebook page. For loads of fun to break up your stay in hospital, join the Juice crew. Send us an email at hello at juicetv.com.au or speak to any of the volunteers wearing green shirts throughout the hospital and let them know you want to be involved in the one and only Juice TV. Every day, kids just like you and me are cared for in hospital by some amazing superheroes. And now, GTV are inviting our patients and families to recognise your favourite hospital superheroes at the Queensland Children's Hospital. Visit gtv.com.au Fill out a superhero nomination form with an adult's help, telling us in 150 words or less why they're your superhero. Round two is open from May 1st. So what are you waiting for? Get your superhero nomination in now! Juice TV Superhero Awards, proudly supported by True Super. I wonder what those cool sea creatures are up to. Let's check back in with Liani. You seem to know a lot about your marine life, but do you think you have the skills to take home the title of the Marine Life Master? I reckon I've got what it takes. Bring it on. What have you got for me? What's the biggest marine animal in the world? The blue whale. Huge. Bigger than three buses long. I've never seen anyone ride a seahorse. Why do they have that name? Well, well, because they're very small. Um, they get a horse because their head looks like a horse um, and they're a beautiful creature. But guess what else? Dads give birth to the babies. Oh. What is the tastiest fish? Well, as a matter of fact, I don't eat fish because it actually makes me sick. Well, the right answer was salmon. Oh, sorry. If you were a fish, what would you be and why? I reckon I'd be a sailfish. Uh, I think you're more of a clownfish. <laughs> What do you call a baby shark? You call it a pup. Richard scored a three out of five. Lucky his next guest is a 10 out of 10. Us, 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 it's got to be us. She's coming this way, Liani. Please, 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 Liani, please, because. Now I'd like you to meet our little mate, Bob. He's a baby bamboo shark. Did you just say baby shark? Yes, I did. the proper intro out of the way. Tell us some facts about Bob here. All right, now Bob is a baby brown banded bamboo shark, so you need to practice that for the rest of the day until you get that right and say it really fast. But Bob is only four months old and he came out of this egg. Did you know not all sharks come from eggs? No, no I did not. No, some sharks are born alive like us, but Bob, when he came out of this egg here four months ago, he was only this big. 
And when you're a shark and you're this big, all the other animals, they wanna eat you, so you don't go up to be this big. That's one and a half meters long. That's how big he's gonna get. But when he popped out of that egg there, he popped out from inside there, and he swam away, mum and dad shark weren't there to look after him. He was on his own. Now when you're that big, and you're on your own, and everyone else wants to eat you, guess what you need to do? Hide. You need to hide, spot on. So see those beautiful brown and white colours he's got there? This one uses his colours to hide amongst the rocks and the sand. So what's that word called when animals use colour to hide again? Camouflage. You got it. Camouflage, so he's using camouflage to hide in his habitat. When he grows up and gets bigger, he's going to change colour because he doesn't need to hide when he's big enough and strong enough and ugly enough to look after himself. He's going to become a grey brown all over. That's Bob. Can you say Bob the baby brown banded bamboo shark for me? Nope. Okay. So is there a reason that we can't pat Bob? Yeah, there's actually two really good reasons. One is that he has powerful crushing teeth. He likes to eat foods like crabs and shellfish and prawns. So if we put our finger in there to give him a pat, he might mistake your finger for a prawn with the, the shape of it and go on the end of your finger. That would really hurt, even though he's a little fella. It'd be a bit like having your finger hit with a hammer. So that's nasty. So that's one good reason we don't touch him. But the more important reason we don't touch him is for his own well-being. Sharks are very sensitive animals. Did you know that? No. Yeah, they, they cry at sad movies. Never knew my father! Come here. <laughs> oh, Bruce. Oh, it's, it's OK, Bruce. Friends are family too. But they do feel every little bump and vibration in the water. That's how they find their food when they're hunting at night time. Because he's a nocturnal feeder, which means he feeds at night. and he sleeps during the day. So they can't see at night, so they need to be sensitive to feel that movement of food around them. So if we had people touching him all the time, then that would be an overload of information for him and it would stress him out and he might die. So we just look at him, but we don't touch him. Yeah. And last but certainly not least, introducing the stupendous starfish. It has. Uh, actually, sorry to stop you right there, but I have, have to burst your bubble a little bit. Uh, we don't call them starfish anymore. Do you know why? Why? Because they're not a fish. What? Do they have a tail like a fish? No, and you can see they have no scales. They have no gills. Guess what else they don't have? What? They don't have any blood. They pump water around inside their body to survive, not blood. So they're not a fish. They were never a fish. We've been calling them the wrong thing for a long time. Do you know what we should be calling them? What? Sea stars. So Richard, can I touch these guys? Absolutely. Are you ready? Let's go. In we go. How do they feel? They're like rough. Why are they so rough? Because they often live in shallow water habitats where the waves crash and bash on top of them. So they need tough bodies to protect them from the harsh habitat where they live. Yeah, all the animals that we've looked at and touched today all belong to the same group of animals. Really? Absolutely. How? Well, they're all e animals called echinoderms. Can you say echinoderms? Echinoderms? Yeah, congratulations and well done. You've just spoken a different language. And that language you've just spoken is called Latin. Latin is an ancient language and we still use it today for naming groups of animals. That's called classification. Echina is Latin for spikes and derm is Latin for skin. So echinoderms, the group that they belong to, spiky, spiny skin. They're the group of animals with spiky or spiny skin. Now some of them, like our other sea stars that we've got here, the blue sea stars, they don't have spiky skin, but all echinoderms have got tube feet somewhere on their body. That's right, that's right, we're not spiky. It doesn't hurt to touch us. All the animals that we've touched so far all have tube feet, don't they? But guess what else? None of them have any blood. They all pump water around inside their body to survive. That's why we don't call these guys starfish anymore. They're an echinoderm. So we call them a? Echinoderm. Yeah, so they're not a starfish. We call them a sea? Star. Awesome. Hey, that was pretty cool. Oh my, didn't Liani do a smashing job? She was incredible. Yeah, that, that wasn't as scary as I thought it would be. Hey, bro, you're facing the wrong way, dude. Oh, oh, yeah, but, but, it, but it's, it's less scary this way. Yeah, yeah. It's okay, little guy. We're finished now anyway. It's time to go home. Home? We can't go home yet. Liani hasn't interviewed us. All we've ever wanted was to be on Juice TV. This isn't fair. Wait, look. <gasps> They're coming back for us. It's so these next sea stars, they're a beautiful, beautiful blue colour. They're our blue linkier sea stars. And with that colour, guess where they're found? 
In the sea. In the sea. Oh, you're very good. But whereabouts in the sea? What habitat? Wouldn't it be like the tropics? Tropics, yep, the coral reef, absolutely, where there's lots of colourful coral. So they're using their colour to blend in, to hide, to camouflage, there's that word again, with the coral reef so they don't get found, so they don't get eaten. And while they look beautiful and blue and velvety coloured, tell me how they feel. They're still rough. They're still rough and hard, aren't their they? Their skin's rough, yeah. Yeah, they're really tough. They actually feel a bit like wood, don't they? Sort of, yeah. Yeah, so they are actually, they need tough bodies too because they're in the shallow water habitat in the coral reef where waves can crash on them. So they too need to protect themselves. How do these sea stars eat? All right, have you had your lunch yet? Yeah. Oh, well, that's a pity. Because if you didn't, you could eat the way they eat. Um, would you do that tonight for dinner if I tell you how they eat? Are you gonna eat the way they do? It depends. Oh, no, no, I need a solid yes or no. I feel this is a trick question. Um, no, I want a solid yes or no, say yes. Sure. All right, excellent. Well, the sea star, what they do is they climb over the top of their food, um, their mouth is underneath them with their little tube feet underneath, and they actually spit their stomach outside their mouth. Their stomach comes outside their mouth, they soak up the food across their tummy, and when they've had enough, they suck their tummy back inside their body again. So you're gonna eat your dinner like that tonight. That's wonderful. That's one gross sea star fact. Wow, we've certainly learned so many fun facts today. Richard Shaw earned his crown as a marine life master. Thanks for bringing all these amazing animals today. And uh, so which one do you reckon was your favourite? That's tricky, but I'd have to say Bob. Bob, he was awesome. He's a beautiful little shark, isn't he? Yes, yes he is. Before we leave, Richard, is there a message you want everyone else to know? Okay, well, I think the big message is, after we've been around and looked and touched all the animals and found out about them, their job is to live on the bottom of the ocean and to keep it clean. They are known as the vacuum cleaners of the ocean floor. So it's really important we look after them because if you want to be able to go fishing in future, if these guys aren't there doing their job, there'll be no fish there left to, uh, to be able to fish for. So it's really all our job to look after them. If we keep plastic pollutions out of the water and we be careful with we washing the car, not to wash it on the road, but wash it up on the grass, so all those chemicals don't go out into the sea. If everyone thought a little bit more about what they did with their day-to-day -day lives, then these guys are gonna be here, there forever, and the sea is gonna be a healthier place. I hope you guys enjoyed all the marine life. I'm Liani. Bye. Bye. Lucky Sea Stars, they finally got to be on TV. If you want to be on Juice TV, don't be scared. It's fun. Plus, you get to be the boss. This is the end of our underwater oh. adventure. I'm Adeline. Bye. Bye. favorite underwater creature. I mean... <laughs> I thought you... you yeah. But my favorite underwater creature. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> What's biggest water animal? <laughs> my favorite t-shirt. T-shirt. <laughs> and I forgot it all. <laughs> Remember guys, it's so easy to be a part of Juice TV. Whether you want to be a host, help us out behind the scenes with filming, or decide what goes into each episode, let us know you want to be involved by sending an email to hello at juicetv.com.au or speak to one of the friendly volunteers throughout the hospital in the green shirts. Also head to our website and Facebook page for all the updates about what we're filming at the hospital.